Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. So today we are going to talk about Spark Structured APIs, both data frame and data set. So in the last video I had spoken a lot about data frame API, but today I want to talk about both of data frame and data set, some of the fundamentals, some comparison between them, and then a bit more about data sets. So let's get started. First of all, let's start with the recap of what we had discussed last time. So Spark has two types of APIs that it provides us. One, structured APIs or high level abstractions, which is data sets, data frames and SQLs. And then there are low level APIs like distributed variables and RDDs. So I started this series uh, talking about structured API, which is data frames. And today I'm going to focus a little bit more on data sets and the fundamentals of both data frame and data set. So first of all, when we talk about these high level abstractions or structured APIs provided by Spark, which are data frames and data sets, both of them, you should think of it as a distributed table like collection, which has well defined rows and columns. So just imagine data frames or data set APIs to uh, be like a relational table, how a table looks like we have rows and we have columns for each of the row. It's exactly like that. If you have to imagine it. Here, each column must have the same number of rows. So it's if you do not have a value for a column, it will be null, but you have exactly same columns for each row and each column must have same number of rows. Okay, Each column will have a type information, which will be consistent. So it cannot happen that a column is string um, for one of the rows and integer for other. It will not happen like that. The each column will have a type information, which will, it will adhere to. Uh, and it will be consistent for every row. Now, when we talk about these data frame and data sets in Spark, they both are immutable. They are lazily evaluated plans and the operations that apply to them, uh, whatever operations, uh, it, 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 those operations apply to the data that is residing on the on this location. Okay? When we perform any action on a data frame, we are actually telling Spark that these actual transformations will return a result. Now, when the result is returned, it creates another RDD. So low level, it is an RDD. And as we know, RDD is immutable with every transformation that happens, it creates a new one. Okay. Now, let us quickly talk about some of the fundamentals, which are very, very uh, essential to understand data frames and data sets. So first of all, the most fundamental thing to understand is a row object. What is a row object? As I said, we can imagine data frame and data set as a relational table, which has rows. So consider each row that is present as a row object. So it's a series of records or rows in a table. And the type of that row is row. Okay, row object means the type of that row is a row and it has a number of columns. So what it is, it's a table. Each row represents a type row and a row object. Whatever is the schema that defines the type of each column and the name of each column. So you exactly know the rows, each of the rows, how many columns and of what type do they have. When we have a data frame and if we partition that, that partitioning defines the layout of the data frame or data set. Basically, what is that partitioning? It is the actual physical distribution. Because as I mentioned, data frame or data set, we can visualize it as a table, but ultimately it is an immutable distributed collection because Sparks operates on this principle of distributed architecture. That's why it is so efficient. Now, we may visualize this as a table, but ultimately when you do processing, it gets distributed across the network. So how will it get distributed? It will be partitioned across different nodes, which are the executors. This partition is nothing but a collection of rows. So if you imagine a data frame or a data set as a table with 100 rows, when it gets partitioned, we may have 10 rows as one group or a partition given to one executor. Now 110 are just examples. It depends how big the data set is and how it is partitioned. But essentially a group of rows will be acting as a partition and they will be sent to each executor. And this whole partitioning scheme defines how it is allocated. So we can uh, understand how the data will be distributed by looking at the partition. What is the simplest way of creating a row? So this is a command that will create a row. 
so it's the example in scala which says that what am i doing i'm just using as i said every row is a row object of type row so i'm just creating row and giving some values this is a simplistic way of creating a row but ideally we would be reading from a file or somewhere to create a data set or a data frame then comes schema so we understood what is a row object and then comes schema schema is nothing but it defines the column names and types present in that row so we can either let a data source define the schema or we can define it explicitly which means if we read from a file or a data store source we can have uh, the schema defined on read or we can create a class and we can actually create objects of that class as a row so that there we are explicitly defining a schema now this is one way in which schema can be created or file can be read we do a spark.read.format format is let's say json and in the load function we give a location from where to read and we say dot schema so what is it doing it is reading the json file and trying to explicitly do a schema on read and read the schema when i run or execute this command what is it going to return it is going to return something like this so it tells us that spark internally cre is creating a struct type to store the schema so if you see it is storing the schema with the type and with the column name so schema is nothing but a struct type which is made up of a number of fields which we may call as struct fields which is like name of the column type of the column a boolean flag of true which specifies whether the column can contain missing or null values so basically this struct type has different struct fields each field is a column with three attributes the column name the data type and a boolean to tell us whether it can be null or can have a missing value so this is how when we read a file spark can interpret the schema by using this command thing that we have to understand is column columns are nothing but uh every row like we know in a table there is a row and there are multiple columns in that row so the columns are a logical construct which are simply representing a value which is on per record basis so we are defining expressions to calculate the value of the column each row can have n number of columns but every row will have same number of columns of the same type so the column is another level of granularity to look at the table Uh, that we are talking about for a data frame or a data set now if we want to have a value of a column the row has to exist the row object has to exist so once we have a row for the row to exist we have to have a data frame or a data set so a data frame or a data set is nothing but a visual representation let's say in the form of a table the table will have a row which is of type row object and each row will have columns which will have a defined type name okay that is how your data frame or a data set will look like it is different levels of abstraction a table a row a column which this whole thing has a schema well defined schema so again if i just have to you know uh, get a value of a column i can give a column name using a function column or col call both of these are valid and i can give a column name and refer to that column in the uh, data frame or a data set now columns can be like i said we can have an expression to evaluate the value of the column so expression can be used as expr expression and within the brackets in that function i can just give a column and do some operation on it there are different ways of doing the uh, evaluating the expression for column but internally what spark does it creates a logical tree uh, by the order of the operation so whenever we are specifying an expression for a column spark will create a logical tree so let's look at an example of uh, how the logical tree is created so if you see this if i evaluate a column like this where i say use this function call i say sum column plus 5 into 200 minus 6 less than another column so i am using an expression to compare two columns i am doing some manipulation of this column and then checking whether it is less than other column how will spark evaluate this when it creates a plan it will create a logical tree so on top of the logical tree we will have this expression of 
less than because this is the comparison between the two columns then what i do on one side i have this column the one that i am comparing on the other side instead of having this sum column i have to first evaluate this whole expression so what it does it starts with here from the right hand side so first comes this subtraction then comes the multiplication then comes the plus sign and for every if you look at every stage so this is a comparison of less than this is one column for the second column again i am evaluating this whole expression this is a logical tree that spark creates what i do i say minus but minus is between what between 6 and this expression so i write 6 and again i start evaluating this whole expression how does it get evaluated i again take the operator which is star the star is between whom between 200 and again this expression so it is 200 and the expression the moment i come to this expression and i evaluate i again take the operator which is plus it is 5 and what this column so that is how spark will start evaluating this whole plan and this is how it will represent a columns expression logically now coming on to a bit more let's talk about data sets because previously we had spoken about data frames today we saw many of the fundamentals of both data frame and data set so now let's talk a bit about data set and how is it different from data frame so data set has a very big difference uh, between data frame and data set there is a very big difference which is data sets are type safe versions of spark structured api so they are both high level abstractions or structured apis but data sets are type safe what does that mean what is a type safe that means at the compile time the type safety is checked so what happens it is basically used for writing statically typed code in java and scala that is why data set api is not available for python and r because those languages are dynamically typed languages so data set api is only and only available for java and scala now when we say these are type safe what does it mean it means we can never accidentally view the object in a data set as being of another class than we actually wanted it to be it is type safe that means if i defined a class uh, so i defined a class i use that to create rows of a data set so it is type safe because if i define in the class it is going to be string it is going to be int it has to be exactly that and it has to be exactly that class that i defined it cannot vary from that so if i defined a class called person with some attributes and i use that to create a data set it is a guarantee that the data set will always contain an object of per class person because it is type safe and at the compile time all these things are checked how do we create a data set okay one more point to remember is since it is type safe it is checked at compile time there is a bit of a performance hit if we compare it to data frames which is part obvious right now how do we create this data set two ways like we saw for data frames also either we create it using a file or a data source or we create it just like specifying some number for example this i specified a range of 100 and just used a collect so it will create a data set with 1 to 100 but this is like a very basic example ideally we would use something like this where we read from a file or a data source i give a location and i'll just to a spark dot read json but very important thing to uh, remember uh, you know here is that the uh, when you create something like this spark dot read dot json so you are using a json file to read the data spark does not know the structure of the data so it is not really creating a data set what it is trying to do is it it creates a data frame which is nothing but a collection of rows each row being a data set and why do i say that okay let's look at it a bit more when we are reading from a json file uh spark does not know how the data looks like it doesn't know uh, how we want to organize that data into type specific jvm object so what it does it just attempts to infer the schema from the json file while doing so it will create a data frame first where each row is a data set but later on if i want to create a data set out of this data frame what will i do i can define a class a scala class 
which clearly states what are the attributes what is the data type something like a class person and then i use that while reading to say read this json file and populate as a person object that is when it is creating a data set not just by reading a json is it creating a data set because at that time it doesn't know what type and for a data set it is very very important to know the type of the object that you are creating because it's a typed api statically typed so this is a very important point to remember when we are reading from a file and we want to create a data set versus a data frame okay now displaying we can display it using a display function or we can use a take function to just take first 10 records there are many methods that are provided like filter map group by average these are all higher level methods which we can directly use to create new data sets because we know data set and data frames are immutable so every time you do an operation you create a new data set or a new data frame now one of the uh, other things that i wanted to talk about is when do we use data sets so data sets are type safe as we know so there is a bit of a performance hit so if we are okay with that and we more want a more robust code which is absolutely bulletproof then we may use data sets because they will take care of your type safety. You cannot accidentally write any other object in the data set. And there can be operations that we cannot be expressed using a data frame. Okay, uh, those kind of manipulation we will use uh, data sets. So I hope this whole uh, video explains you a bit more about the fundamentals as well as something about data sets. Uh, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and in the next videos we will continue to look at some more high level APIs and then we will go into the low level APIs of Spark. So thank you everyone.